thanks for that petal. So what we've got in here is um, a cheese known in England as a carefilly, uh, or Wales more precisely, I'm sure Gav has eaten one of these once or twice. But we've made the cheese today, didn't have time to film it because it's quite a long drawn out process. That's ready now to go into the press to start forming. But what we have got time to do is show you what we're going to do with this. Now this here, as you'll see, along with my homebrewed cider, is all the way. Come and have a look, Jam. Now, have a look in here. All this stuff, this is the way out of the uh, out of the cheese making process. This is what they call milk serum and we're going to make ricotta out of this. So if you just pop over here Gem to the pot and you will see this is going to go back in. There's nothing else in this boiling pan but what's left of the cheese. Little bits of that. We're going to put all of that way back in there and up to me. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put that on a heat and with the way it doesn't matter about how hot you boil it or how quickly you bring it up to temperature get the heat on we're going to heat this up now to 90 degrees celsius or around 200 degrees fahrenheit so why don't you come back when we get a little bit closer Ricotta. It don't mean that I cook it twice. It don't mean it is a cook it twice. It is a cook it once, the first time, and then you cook it again for the ricotta. That's what it means. Ricotta cooked twice in Italian. For those of you that didn't know, we're just up to 90 degrees centigrade now. The alarm's just gone off before we started rolling, and as you can see, the uh, the ricotta is this stuff on the surface here. You see that? Look. So if I separate it, you see the way underneath, which has gone. It's the greeny coloured stuff. So that way is what we're going to throw away. We don't need it. So we're just going to let this uh, get to the, the crucial point, which is where you're going to see ring of bubbles just starting to come up around the edge of the pan, almost as though it's simmering, and that indicates to us that it's ready for straining. It's as simple as that. I've done nothing but heat the way up. It's at 198 degrees Fahrenheit. I normally take it to about 200. Seems to have worked so far, um, which is just over 90 degrees centigrade. Probably 90. Well, we'll sh soon find out. Yeah, it's just over 93. As soon as it hits that temperature, I'm going to kill the heat, and we're going to start scooping off the uh, ricotta from the top of the way because it'll be floating up there. And what we have for that? Sutty tap is the good old ladle. So I'm just going to rinse the sanitizer off the ladle because it's strongly alkaline, this particular sanitizer. So we're about up to temperature. Come on in, Jen. Come and get a bit of a closer look. We're not going to need that anymore because it's a slotted spoon, so that can go over there. And it's very similar to like. There we go, we've hit temperature, we're over 200 now. You can hear, can you hear it? You can hear it starting to make a bit of a, well it was, now I've killed the heat, it's not so bad. And all we're gonna do, is just go in there, and we're just gonna take the top off. Can you get this? Almost like you're skimming the foam. That is your ricotta.
No, you don't want to be dropping this into your cheesecloth. Which is all I've got here, it's just a cheesecloth lined bowl. I did neglect to mention the type of equipment you was going to need to use. In fact, the slotted spoon might get it, I'm not sure. I know last time I tried it all fell through. There we go, it's working on this occasion. Because we've got quite a clean break. And the ricotta, as you can see, is particularly thick. Look at the colour of that way. Really green, huh? Mm. Oh, yeah, we've got some ricotta here, all right. Ricotta? It means to cook it twice. Play it by ear, whatever works is what you use to get it out. What you don't want to be doing, big no no, is pouring that through your cheesecloth. It's just going to go everywhere. I'm going to take the thermometer out now because that's sat in a nice big chunk. out of this and it's really proved me wrong I think we're gonna get a you know over 200 grams of ricotta here okay well I'm happy with that so the next stage is to get a nice little piece of string with a loop in one end and we'll use the loop in this end actually We'll just get that set up and we're just going to start to draw in the edges of this cheesecloth now. You don't want to be firm with it at all. And as gentle as possible. You can see the way that's left behind. Now if you if you're harsh with it at this point it's going to start coming out of your cheesecloth and you're going to lose it. This particular cheesecloth, I've actually doubled it over so it's got a slightly more tight woven um, mesh to it. So like I say, we don't want to be losing any of that beautiful ricotta cheese. Then I'm just going to tighten this loop around there and then we can lift it out of the way. I'm going to pour the way away back into there. And then all we're going to do is just move out the home brew for a second and the ladle. And then we're just going to wrap this around door handle just leave that to drain now and we can leave that there as soon as it's cooled pretty much it's gonna be ready to eat if you want a little bit of a firmer ricotta uh, then you can leave it overnight for about eight hours and then when you come to it you're just gonna have to pop it into a tub and then put it in the fridge and we're back right the ricotta's been hanging 
a little longer than eight hours, which is normally what you leave it for. It's been here pretty much all day. So it's time to take her down and have a look how much we've got. So I'm going to weigh it first. Just see how much there is. When I've taken it out of the cheesecloth, I'll come and have a look at this. That's your ricotta. And it comes out. It's firmed up somewhat now. So let's have a look. 354 grams. 12 and a half ounces of ricotta. I don't know if it's going to fit in that tub. It should do. So what I'm going to do next is put the ricotta into that bowl and we've got some chivey wives. Just give these a quick rinse because they're a bit sweaty. You don't have to get all this mucky washing in. Little dirty pots on the side. As the missus you see she's a bit slow. She don't get stuff washed up. Right, so I'm just going to take all these chives, just a handful really. Oh, we'd best put that somewhere flat. There we have it. And this now can go back over here. So we're going to stick the chives into the ricotta. We're just going to break it up a bit. Look at that. Oh yes. It smells cheesy. rinse my fingers and at this point we're also going to salt it let's get some salt out on our petal right want a good a good glug of salt down there I'll just get a fork I'm just going to start to work the chives so come and have a look into the cheese. Looks like mouldy cheese. It looks like mouldy cheese now. Trust me, there's nothing mouldy about this. Are we getting crackers out? Yep. And then I'm just going to pop all this into our, oh, there's some chives on there, look. Into our sanitised tub, which we've just weighed it in. Oh, oh my goodness. Yummy bum cheese. Yummy bum cheese. Something yummy about it. I think it bum, if it tastes like bum cheese, I'm not eating it. But I know it won't. I'm just going to flatten this down. So we can get the lid on. Next, Jacob's Grim Crackers. Come on, Jan, get some close ups going. 
head on there. Look at that. Absolutely delicious. Look at that. Mmm. That's just made my belly rumble. It's spreadable. It's spreadable, all right. But the question is, is it edible? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a bit cheesy for you? Oh, and here we go. Come on, don't go so far back. Let's get a close up on here. Now there it is, the lovely cracker. No, it's not work. Shut up. <laughs> Mmm. With the onion in. You know, chives, that is. Blissimo. Bang on. And this will keep probably for a week in the fridge. Mmm. The torta. Cook it at twice. Oh. So.